Amen. Amen. It gives me joy to see them, right? I'm so excited. Many more last to come. And if you're trusting the Lord for the fruit of the womb, be expectant. Yours is coming. Coming. I'm speaking out by the, by the Spirit of the Lord. I believe that so strong in my heart this morning. Amen. Amen. So I said to us earlier, what is there to preach again? Luke 24, that's the last book. By the way, Luke was a doctor, and uh, he was writing to, to Theophilus. He was writing to a Greek governor, and of course, he was educated, so he had an accurate account of what happened. So, the women who were the last of the cross, they were the last at the cross. They actually watched Jesus. Arari said something. Uh, Father, to you. what did he say? Please? Unto your hands I commit my spirit. They actually heard Jesus said that word, and they were they were there, hopeless, perplexed perhaps not knowing what is going to be next of, of, their, of their fate because the Messiah, don't, by the way, Jesus' mother was there as well. The, the Messiah who they had worked with, they've seen him raise the dead, perform miracles. They've seen him do all, from what the children said, right? Who were the disciples of Jesus? There were people following him all about, seeing the miracles with him. He gave them power and authority. At some point, they, they've also performed that. And they saw their Messiah passed out on the cross. And so, to tell you their state of hopelessness, you see in their acts on Sunday morning, when they went to the grave with their spice, you know, preparing Jesus' body for decomposition. That's, that's, that's it. That's the end. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. They want to, you know, bless the body of Jesus and send him forth to decomposition. Perhaps they were already in the, in the state of forgetfulness. What, what, just imagine how painful that experience must have been with them. Jesus didn't just die. That was the Passion Week. He was beaten. He was dragged on the streets. And so, the, the Jesus that they, so, that they so loved, they were in a state of confusion. There is, there is no doubt about their reality. They were confused. They didn't know what else was going to become of them. And so, maybe the last respect they will give is to bring the spies and just, they had prepared it. But when they got to the tomb, perhaps they were even thinking, these women, men was not amongst them. They have rationalized it. <laughs> they have settled it. Peter, he, he has, I don't know. So, maybe they will, they will be thinking, I, I don't really know their names, but maybe Mary will have asked the other Mary, we are going to this tomb now. Who is going to roll the stone from us? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Let us, we were going to get there first. You know, they were women of faith. Something will happen because uh, certainly the tomb will be closed with a big stone there. And, but they found the stone, rolled away from the tomb. They, then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. They must have said, okay, could it be that someone 
have stolen the body. I'm sure they wouldn't just enter that tomb. Someone must have people. What's going on there? Okay. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed. Can you give me the amplified version? Maybe we'll find a, a, a more, a, 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 an explanation for the word greatly perplexed. Oh, okay. And while they were perplexed and wondering what to do about this. Okay, so we can't find his body. What do we tell to our people? They had already forgotten all his words, all his instructions, everything that he had said that I'm and the resurrection and the life, I'm going to rise again. That's the truth. That's the state that they were. They were in a state of forgetfulness. That's, and that's one of the things that forgetfulness could do for a believer. It throws a believer into a state of confusion. When you don't remember God's promises, devil throws all, all kinds of things towards you. In fact, when you have forgotten how much he loved you, then you begin to look to yourself and begin to ask yourself, do I want anything at all? Especially when life begins to throw jabs at you. Then you, you find yourself in that state of confusion. They were forgetful, actually. What to do about this? Behold, two men in dazzling raiment suddenly stood beside them. And as the women were frightened... And were bowing their faces to the ground. The men said to them, Why do you look for the living amongst those who are dead? You see, in a state of forgetfulness, things will look dead. Why do you look for the living? Amongst the dead. Have you forgotten so soon. That he said to you that I am. The life. I am the resurrection and the life. So why do you seek for him. He was speaking to their state of mind. Why are you looking. For, what have you come to do with this spice? Maybe the angel would have said to them. I should expect that you will come to this tomb rejoicing. That our savior has risen. And be expectant to see him. At least he promised that he is going to show up. Before he eventually ascended. What is wrong with you ladies? The face is to the ground. Why do you look for the living among those that are dead? Verse 6. He is not in this place. But has reason. Remember. How he told you what he was still in Galilee. Remember his words. So I'm saying to someone today, why don't you remember his promises for you? For his promises, they are yea and they are amen. He watches over what he has said to perform them. Why do you seek for the living among the dead? That the son of man must be given over into the hands of sinful men. Men whose ways are by or, or nature is to act in opposition to God and be crucified and on the third day rise from death. Verse 8. Suddenly there was a light in their spirit. And they remembered his words. When I remember his promises, I shout hallelujah. When I remember When you remember his promises, you shout hallelujah. Suddenly, they remembered what he had said. And look at what happened afterwards. Verse, verse, verse seven. And having returned from the tomb, they reported all those things taken together to the 11 apostles and to all the rest. You see, in this season, women accounts were not considered to be credible. And so, now it, it was Mary Magdalene and Johanna and Mary, the mother of James, and other women with them who reported these things to the apostles. 
verse 11. But this report seemed to the men an idle tale. Oh, thank you, Amplified Version. Madness, faint things, nonsense, and they did not believe the women. They were considered to be sick. You know, sometimes when you rise in the middle of the night and you remember, you tell the devil and you dance around your house, I know what the Lord has said about me. Suddenly you shout hallelujah, your neighbor is saying, are you mad? Tell them you are not seeing what I'm saying. When things are going down and you say, for me, there's a lift. And people say, what are you talking in this economy? I know what I'm saying. Because I don't belong to this world, by the way. In case you don't know. What makes me abnormal? You see, I'm not really normal. I should not be normal. Because I am supernatural. Supernatural, you see, the, the, the ways of the cross is foolishness. To them, there are what? It's foolishness to them. So I don't owe them an explanation for the things that I believe. People will tell you you are over spiritual, you are not being realistic. Thank you. You don't understand. I, I don't have to explain to you. These women brought to them an account of Jesus' resurrection. What he has already told them will happen. And they consider them to be sick. In fact, I studied the word. The Greek word for it is delirium. In other words, a, a, a forgetfulness of mind. They are already, they, 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 like, you are, it's okay, we'll understand. You must have had tough time in the past one week, seeing Jesus beating, nails going through his hand. It's not a pleasant scene. You are just crazy. It's okay, you need a doctor. Remember, the guy that wrote this was a doctor, so he, was, he knew what he was talking about. They thought they had a mental illness. Because they remembered his promises. And so, uh, the devil comes to me, telling me this and that. I remind the devil, you don't understand. I'm not so forgetful of his works on the cross. I am not forgetful of the, of the fact that by stripes, I have been healed. So, doctors are saying to me, this is going to kill me. And I'm saying, no, doctor, you don't understand. I have life inside of me. See, I am, you know, uh, um, scientifically, medically, it's all right. That's your own problem. My report is of the Lord. What he has said to me is what I believe. I know there is a spare part in heaven. I believe so. Amen. Amen. But this report seemed to the men an idle tale. Madness. Faint things. Nonsense. They are saying, your time is up. You say, no, I'm, God is just beginning with me. I, I said, you know, when we look at all the indices... This cannot happen. It's all right. That's your. That's for you, not for me. And they did not believe the women. They don't have to. But Peter got up and rose. Peter did six things in this place. Peter got up. He ran. That's two. And stooping down. That's three. Looking in. That's what? He saw the linen clothes alone by themselves. He went away. That's what? Wondering about eh? and marveling at what had happened. He was still confused. And behold, that very day, two of the disciples were going. Okay, so that ends the story. This is. And so Peter was still thinking, okay, I have a note here. I want to read something. I think I wrote something down. Oh yeah, I've said it earlier on. About forgetfulness leads to confusion. But the, the truth is this. How many of God's promises do you know for yourself? How many of what he has said concerning you, your family, your finance, your future, do you know? Do you even remember the promise of eternal life? Do, do you know that people 
live an immoral lifestyle consistently because of their forgetfulness of eternity. You, when we remember what it took Jesus to deliver salvation to us, then our, resp- our posturing of heart will be right. I've watched Passion of Christ quite a number of times and uh, it just reminds me that if this was just acted, what about the real deal? But let's continue. So, as they were going, as this was still a, a lot of people were confused in this season. It's, it's okay because they've just totally forgotten. And so, as they were, two men were going to him house, him house, whatever house, Cleopas and another guy, and they were speaking to themselves, confused. And it's so important that I want to point something out to let you know that they were, they were also forgetful. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had occurred. And while they were conversing and discussing together, Jesus himself caught up with them and was already accompanying them. I, I was looking at this, I said, oh, thank you, Jesus. Just a reminder that you will be with me as far as I'm here on earth, the promise of the Holy Spirit. But their eyes were held so that they did not recognize him. And he said to them, what is this discussion that you are exchanging, throwing back and forth between yourself as you walk along? And they stood still, looking sad and downcast. Forgetfulness. We keep a man's head bowed. Because you just don't know yet. You've not come to that consciousness yet of his, of his goodness, his, his goodness towards you. Then one of them named Cleopas answered him, Do you alone dwell as a stranger in Jerusalem? And not know the things that have occurred there in these days? Excuse me, sir. Are you not listening to the news? And he said to them, What kind of things? If I were the other guy, this man, I don't I don't think I have his he doesn't know what's going on. He's not current. And he said to them, What kind of things? And they said to him, About Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet. Mighty in work and word before God and all people. They remember that. And how our chief priests and rulers gave him up to be sentenced to death and crucified him. Let's continue. But now, this is it. This is their problem. Or this was their problem. But we were hoping. If our devotion says, we had hoped. So, our hope, gone. Completely dashed. He had told us, because this was a, this negative discredited all the account of he was a prophet, he did mighty works. Because they, they said, we had hoped. If you look at, I think you should look for KJV or Nick in James Version, you, you, I think that's it, or NIV, I can't remember. But we were hoping that it was, it was he who will redeem and set Israel free. Yes. And besides all this, it is now the third day since these things occurred. Next verse. And moreover, some women of our company that stunned us and drove us out of our senses. Still speaking of Mary, those, you know, smart ladies who, who believe, they believe, see, Jesus, women are in Jesus' ministry, it's not today. So when you see, when you come for a prayer meeting, you see a lot of, they really just, they are just lovers. It's not today. They will love Jesus till the end. So, and moreover, they astounded us and drove us out of, in other words, the report they brought to us looks like we we don't, we can't put it together. So, you don't have to put things together when your wife is talking to you. When she said, I feel like 
we should not do this. Don't say, I just don't know. I don't like this person. I just feel it. And you're asking, can you give me reasons, logical reasons? Don't wait for logical reasons because it might be too late. And you may not be able to escape. Truly, they, had, they, they can hear God. And they were at the tomb early in the morning. 24. But did not find his body. And they returned saying that they had even seen a vision of angels. Who said that he was alive. He was alive. So some of those who were with us went to the tomb and they found it just as the women had said. But him, they did not see. How can they, were those so forgetful that they already told, they just said, why are you seeking the living amongst the dead? So as Cleopas and his brother were thinking, he was still thinking in his mind that at least if he has resurrected, maybe a spirit, but that's one thing you must know. Jesus resurrected with his body, his body never decomposed. So if he resurrected, that's least you should find his body there. And Jesus said to them, Oh foolish ones, sluggish in mind, dull of perception, and slow of heart to believe, are there to and trust in and rely on everything that the prophet have spoken. So if you have a doubt, believing what Jesus has said, maybe Jesus is speaking to you in this place. Sluggish in mind, dull of perception, and slow of heart to believe. Are there to trust him and rely on. So, Jesus is just pointing out to you that this is your state of mind. Maybe not your reality, because foolishness sometimes is not an abuse. It's just calling your attention to the things you will have to adjust in your life. And the moment you adjust it and you get better, you're no longer foolish in that regard. So, maybe if you find it very difficult to believe and you read something, sir. No, I'm going to make you the greatest session on earth. And you're wondering, how come? Me, I'm just from a village somewhere, somewhere in Edo State. It's not, nobody has ever done this in my family before. If you are still in that state, not believing what God has said. In fact, if you do not trust that Jesus loves you, just the same way, the way you are right now, I pray for you, the Lord will light your spirit. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So let's continue. Was it not necessary and essentially fitting that the Christ the Messiah should suffer all these things before entering into his glory, his majesty and splendor? And the story goes on. And eventually... They, when they got to the town and uh, it was late already and he, they asked that okay let me pass the night with you and as he passed the night with them he began to expound the word to them and eventually broke the bread and their eyes were open and they said to themselves so how did we not recognize that he, while, yet, while he was yet speaking we could feel the fire right in our bones, in our spirit. But yet, we still did not know it was Jesus. Anyway, study that part more and more. Let me go back to my notes. I have a few things to, to say. How to avoid forgetfulness. How to avoid forgetfulness of his promises. Avoid the careless living. Avoid the careless living. Proverbs 16, 17. The highway of the upright avoids evil. The one who guards his way protects his life. Deuteronomy 4, 8 to 9. And what large and important nation has, has statutes and ordinances so upright and just as all the law which I set before you today. Only take heed. And guard your life diligently. Guard your, it, is succumb, it is wisdom not to be careless with your life. Guard what comes to your mind. Guard what you see. I, I, I say that, you see, 
the entrance to the heart is primarily through the eyes and what you hear. You may not have 100% control on the things that you see, but for the things that you hear, most of the time you have up to about 80%. Nobody can force me to listen to a song that I don't want to listen to. Right? Nobody can force me to read an article I don't, that I feel is unhealthy for my spiritual life. Nobody can force me to watch a movie that will destroy my mind or at least set it on that path. Don't be careless with your life. In fact, even with what you eat also. There are tons and snares on the way of the crooked. The one who guards himself stays far from them. Avoid careless living. Don't be what to be will be. There is nothing wrong in planning. Proverbs 16 told us. Of course, you commit your plans to God and he makes the final decision. But don't be careless. Check your heart regularly for pride. And this is very subtle sometimes. A number of times, it, we, people who don't know that the seed of pride is there until they find the right environment to grow. But the truth is that there are always indications for pride. There are things you will, you, you will know. When you are a kind of person who always wants your opinion to be not just heard, but when what you think is right is not done, you feel offended, you feel sad, you feel, you feel unhappy. That is pride somewhere. You always want to have your way. Even as husband and wife, you don't always have, you shouldn't have your way at all times. When you don't listen, there is pride. There is a seed of pride there. When you want people, and the thing, the thing is that pride has a posture. It has a posture and appearance. There's a look to pride. There's a thin line between pride and confidence or boldness. Just find it. Check your heart regularly for pride. Okay. Uh, Romans 12, 16 to 17. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud. Instead, associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Do not repay any evil for evil. Give careful thought to, to do what is honorable in everyone's eyes. Friends, do not avenge yourself. Instead, leave room for God's wrath because it is written, Vengeance belongs to me. I will repay, says the Lord. Number three, be sober and vigilant. Blot out what you can call the Amalekites. And I'm just going to read uh, an account in Deuteronomy 25, verse 17 to, to 19. Remember what Amalekite did to you? Uh, this is, a, is it, I'm just using it as a metaphor now. Remember what Amalek, Am- Amalek did to you along the way when you came out from Egypt, how he met you along the way and attacked among you all the strang- the stranglers at your rear, the weak ones, when you were faint and weary, and he did not fear God. Therefore, it shall come about when the Lord your God has given you rest from all your surrounding enemies in the land which the Lord your God gives you as an inheritance to possess, you shall blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven, you must not forget. Okay? Just as they are Amalekites, the devil attacks believers in their most vulnerable state. Your weakest moment. That's when it comes. In fact, it comes when things, there is what I call the danger of comfort. Because Comfort too can be your most vulnerable state. I could show you examples in the Bible. And there, David thought there was no need for war. Okay. Uh, Jehoshaphat, he had, he had become so powerful. He had become so, so, I mean, money was there, power was there, riches was there. So there is the danger of, for, the danger of forgetfulness in those season, forgetfulness of God's doing, forgetfulness to understand that he, des, he, des, he, he desire 
ultimate from us. He wants to be our priority. He, he doesn't want us to put our trust in wealth and riches and power in whatever he has given to us, but he wants to be God of all in our lives. He wants to be number one. So what I'm saying here to you that blot out the Amalekite. You see, uh, First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be of sober spirit. What does, be of sober spirit. Be on the alert. So you're of sober spirit and you are watching. Be on, to be alert means that you are Eh? You are looking out for danger. You are looking out for the red flags. Be sober. That's how to blot out the Amalekite. You have to be sober. You have to be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. It comes at a time that you are physically weak, or where you could think of yourself as helpless and begins to put things in your mind. If you do this now, Jesus will not even be hungry. He will understand. Okay. You don't have to pray today. If you miss today, it's okay. Yeah, I mean, it's alright. Nothing will really happen. And if you even miss tomorrow, it's okay. If you don't have to fast. It's all right. You are good. Don't you see things are working? You don't have to be. You don't have to stress yourself. You don't have to. After all, you see, you didn't even pray last last month. You didn't fast. You didn't even pray for your children. You didn't pray, and they are not doing so bad. They are not doing bad. It's okay. You don't have to. And you see, a man is as strong as a spirit man. The moment you are weak spiritually, the devil is beginning to take over already. The truth is that when Samson took wine. He still had energy. Abby? When he heard from a dead animal, the honey, did his, his power was still there. Am I correct? Good. The day a woman gets pregnant, there is no alarm that will go off and say, Pa! Today, you are now that act of that's, this is it. You will discover some weeks after. And the day somebody gets HIV, also, you will not know. No alarm will go off. If I can be there for years, you just realize. I just. What am I saying really is that, you see, there are things that when we don't do them, the devil will make us feel it. Things are still okay. But you have to be sober and be vigilant. Look out for the red flags. So I ask, really, why do you pray in this season? Or why are you still serving God? So if God gives you what you have been praying for, will you still serve him? Will you still be sober and vigilant? Will you still always look out for the enemies coming into your space? Or will you just be forgetful? Everything is okay. I don't need God anymore. How many minutes do I have left? please? Time up. Ah. I have to finish this thing. Give it five more minutes, please. Hear the word. Act on it. And continue acting on it. James 1, 22 to 25. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it is like glazing at your face in a mirror. And see yourself. Walk away and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says... And don't forget, and don't forget, and don't forget, and don't forget what you had. Then God will bless you for doing it. Live with eternity in view. Jesus did not die just so you can have a mansion on earth, send your children to school, dress nicely, 
wear good shoes, get back the, the best degrees in the world, go to the best business schools in the world. He didn't die just for all of that alone. Ultimately, he died that you and I may have access to eternity. I am going to a place to prepare for you. He said, in my father's house, there are many mansions there. I'm going to a place to prepare. I said, I'm going, I'm going to my father to prepare a place for you. In my, father's, in my father's house, there are many mansions there. If it were not so, I would not have told you. We must live with eternity in view. Because if we don't, we are just not doing well, doing justice to the gift of grace that we have received. But you must not forget the things. You, but you must, uh, first, second, first second Peter 3 verse 8 to 10. But you must not forget the one thing, dear friends. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord and a thousand years like a day. The Lord isn't really being slow about the, his promises. As some think, no, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. But the day of the Lord will come, will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Then the heaven will pass away with a terrible noise, and the very element themselves will disappear in fire, and the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. So I submit to you this morning, Jesus is coming back. You believe that? Yes, sir. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon. We are going to see the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are going to see the Lord. Live your Easter daily. Every day, remind yourself of his crucifixion, of his death, and of his resurrection. But Christ has rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law. You're not under any cause anymore. That's reminding yourself. That's living your Easter every day. When he was hung on the cross, he took upon himself the cause for our wrongdoing. For it is written in the scripture, cost is everyone who is hung on a tree. Through Christ Jesus, God has blessed the Gentiles with the same blessing he promised to Abraham. So that, he, so that we who are believers might receive the promise of Holy Spirit through faith. Holy Spirit is a guarantee that God is eventually going to have us all. Ephesians chapter 1 is a guarantee, a down payment that you belong to me. When you go buy a car, you put, on a, you put down a down payment. I say, I'm coming back. The, the dealer will not sell that car. If you have gone to the right place. But if you go, if you go to companies, I mean, good companies like Mercedes-Benz, you know, Range Rover, and you've said, I love this 2024. Amen. Um, Range Rover, Vogue or something. And I'm putting 50% down payment. I'm coming back next, next week to pick it up. They will, they will call you. They will be, okay, thank you for your patronage. We'll be expecting. They, will, they dare not sell that car. So the Holy Spirit is the guarantee that you belong to Jesus. And it's coming back for you. Leave your Easter reality every day. You are the one he loved. I am the one that you have shown mercy. That you have shown mercy. You have shown mercy. I say to myself that there is nothing I can do more or less that will stop God from loving me. Jesus had been slain before the foundation of the earth has been laid. So he loves me right now. He loves me yesterday. And he will love me tomorrow. So, whatever you have done, doing or will do, cannot change that reality of God's love for you. As long as you have that breath, as long as you have his life, 
inside your spirit. And lastly, I love this scripture. Galatians 2, 19 to 21. For I through the law died to the law that I might live for God or to God, that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. In other words, I am not about to be loved. He loved me, for I am crucified. I have been so when Jesus died, I died. When he rose again, I have life in me. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. What greater sacrifice can someone give to me other than this? And guess what? If God did not withhold Jesus, his son, the Bible says, how can he not with Jesus freely give us all things? Aren't you glad that your, your, your Redeemer lives forevermore? Hallelujah. I am glad because he lives forevermore. Glory. I am not forgetful of the fact that he died, he rose, and he's coming back. So the life I live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me. Who loved me. It's 21, I said, I do not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. So my righteousness is not something I'm trying to walk. I am righteous because Jesus made me righteous. Although righteousness has responsibilities. Of character building. But I am righteous. I am righteous. And you are too. If you had believed in your heart that Jesus is Lord, and you confess with your mother that he is Lord, you are righteous. You have access to the Father. You have access to the love of your Father. Can't you feel his love wrap around you right now? Can't you feel Jesus' love for you right now? He went to the cross because of you. To deliver that grace to you. The Lord bless you. And keep you. Have a wonderful Easter. And God bless you.